All right, you guys, so I just did a video all about starting your fitness journey. And I think with that comes a lot of questions of what do I need for the gym? So I'm gonna start with the first thing that I do is gonna get I'm gonna get ready, of course. So there's different types of shoes, there's different types of um, outfits you can wear, things like that. I personally like to wear any type of leggings uh, with a tank top and sports bra, something that I feel really comfortable in. I like to all, oftentimes start in a sweatshirt and then I end up taking that off um, once my body kind of warms up. There are different types of shoes. I would just use like a basic training shoe or a basic running shoe or something like that until you figure out what kind of exercises you're going to be going more for. There are like zero drop shoes. Um, a lot of times Robert and I will wear like um, what is considered just like a lifting shoe, um, which is very, very flat, doesn't have a lot of cushion on the bottom. But just start with your regular basic type of shoe until you figure out what type of exercise you really want to be doing on a regular basis. So the next thing I'm gonna do is grab my shaker cup, of course, Live Savage, this is our brand. Um, and a lot of times I use a brand called Rari Nutrition. It's a pre-workout, I really love it, sweetened with stevia. This is one that Robert's been using a lot, hopefully that will focus. But it's called Pure Pump. Uh, do vitamins pre-workout formula. It is not sweetened. It doesn't have any of the added stuff that all of the other ones do. So between this one and the Rari Nutrition are the ones that I use for my pre-workout. You do not need a pre-workout. If you have plenty of energy and you're doing fine, you don't need any, any like lift, you know, lift me up type of stuff, you don't need to. A lot of times you can just use a cup of coffee or just go with your natural energy. But sometimes if you need like a little bit of a boost for deadlifts or a, a, like a heavy leg day or something, this is the stuff you're gonna wanna have. With that, we can mix in this, hopefully this will focus too, um, Redmond Relight. And it is a um, electrolyte mix. It's very helpful intro workout, before your workout, after your workout, or intro workout. Um, just to get those electrolytes up, especially if you're gonna be sweating a lot, things like that. So you can always add that to your drink as well, your pre-workout drink. So next, of course, you're gonna want to stretch and you're gonna wanna do a lot of those warm-up movements, maybe walk a little bit on the treadmill or the Stairmaster or something like that to kinda get your blood pumping, your, your muscles moving and things like that. But then, either pre or post workout, which I tend to do it on both, you're gonna want a foam roll. And these are, this is so, so helpful to break up that mus muscle tissue. Um, this is a, just like a regular foam roller. You can use it for your back, your legs, your chest, whatever you want. Um, some of them are flat, um, like a flat surface, and some of them have like little bumpy things on it like this one does. Um, you can use either one. I generally prefer the flat ones. Robert really likes this. This is a little bit tough on me. It, it kind of hurts a little bit. Um, and then this little guy is really helpful too to just like really dig into some spots that you might have some knots or really tight areas, the bottom of your, bottoms of your feet, things like that, like parts of your glutes. You can also put it on your back and roll up against a wall if you just have like those smaller areas to get. So. I like to have these. Most gyms will have these available for you. It may not look exactly like this, but um, I would even purchase one of these at home just so that when you are sore, you can really break up that muscle tissue and, and really help that healing process. So let's say you are a brand new beginner with working out. You don't need a lot of equipment. You don't need a lot of stuff. You don't need to go out and buy a bunch of things. You just don't need to. I started with nothing. I wore shoes that were super old and workout gear that was hand-me-downs. Um, and I didn't have any of the fancy stuff. I didn't have wraps, I didn't have sleeves, I didn't have anything. Start where you are and as you slowly progress, then you can start purchasing things. I think the first thing I purchased were these wraps. These are not my first pair, but um, they are wraps that go around your wrist like this and you wrap it around the bar and it helps with your grip strength. Now, if you're doing a sport like powerlifting or CrossFit or something like that, these are not gonna be for you. This is more, I would say, for a body, 
bodybuilding style workouts where you don't need that grip strength. Um, and you don't use these all the time. You wanna make sure that you are getting and building your grip strength, but it, for those heavier movements where your grip is gonna give out before your muscle, you might wanna start using these. I noticed that that was happening a lot in the beginning of my lifting experience because um, my muscles were really getting after it and my grip strength was just not caught up. Um, now I can do just about every lift without ever having to use these, but they do come in handy. And since you have that barrier between the bar and your skin, it doesn't rough up your hands as much. So these are my next one. I'm gonna link everything below. So if you guys have any questions, just link, look below, you'll see the links. I think this is like maybe $10, these ones are, um, and it's the Harbinger brand. I think the next thing that I bought, oh gosh, I don't even know the next thing I bought. It was one of, one of these two options. So I prefer to use wraps. If I'm lifting heavy with squats or something like that, I prefer to use wraps, and these will just wrap all the way around your, um, your knees and things like that. Um, Robert prefers to use the sleeves, which are also a really great option. These help keep your knees warm throughout all of the exercises that you're doing, if you're doing leg press or squats or whatever it is that you're doing. These help keep your knees warm. Um, for me, it, they usually pinch the back of my uh, leg and it makes me not feel super comfortable. So I haven't preferred these over the wraps. The wraps are kind of annoying because you have to wrap every single time you go to do a lift and then you take them off and then you wrap again and then you take them off unless they are loose enough to where you don't have to do that. But um, if they're that loose, then you probably don't need to be wearing them anyways. So I prefer these wraps. Again, we'll link them down below so you guys can kind of see. Um, and I'll also link these sleeves as well. There are a million brands. Um, I will kind of list you guys the ones that we use or the people that we like to support, the businesses that we like to support, um, and that be, might be really helpful. Other people use some wraps for their wrists and things like that. I don't use any of that. It's too fancy. I just, I just don't need it. I like to keep things really basic and simple. Last but not least is my belt. This is my lifting belt. It's super cute. This one I got actually made um, for myself. Uh, it says Lady Savage, Crystal Face Sykes, and I got that when I married Robert. And so mine is like a little latch. It starts like this and then you put it, you put it in the hole and then it, it latches closed. And I have really, really enjoyed this one a lot. I, did, I started out with a very um, inexpensive option which is the um, Velcro, and that is a totally fine option. But if you want something that's gonna be really stable, really sturdy, then I would highly suggest getting a true, real belt. Um, you shouldn't need this all the time. I only, only, only ever use this during my heaviest sets of the heaviest exercises, which are my compound lifts, deadlifts, squats, etc. cetera. Um, you are using it for support. You should be able to do the lifts without it, but this is gonna help give you that extra support if you're trying to push yourself in the gym. Safety, health means everything. You want to make sure that you are doing the best thing, the best way possible to prevent from any injury. So don't push yourself like a dum-dum. Use a belt if you plan on pushing yourself, if you wanna do a one rep max, if you wanna do sets of three, whatever you're doing, Make sure that you're taking care of yourself and preventing any injury from happening, that you're lifting properly first and foremost, and then get yourself a really good quality um, belt. Uh, again, I did start with the Velcro because when I was very beginning lifting, I wasn't lifting a lot of weight. So I used the Velcro and eventually it got to the point where it was just popping off and so I got a, a little bit better one. But I used that first Velcro one for probably uh, the first year or two I was lifting. So that one's mine, and you kind of saw how it latched. And then this one is Robert's, and his has a buckle as like a belt, like a belt buckle, and it goes into this little loop over here. And we have the same brand. Um, it's called Aesthetics, and again, I will link it below. This is the only brand of belt I will really buy. Um, his is also, his says his name on it. Um, 
So you can personalize it or you can just get it plain and simple. And to be real honest, like Robert's had his for many years um, and getting a quality belt can be expensive, $100 or so, $200 or so, um, but it's worth it. And I've had mine for almost two years now. Robert's has, has had his for like probably five years, it feels like. Yeah, I bet you about five years. Um, and it's worth it because you spend a little bit of money, you prevent yourself from any injury, um, you're helping yourself, and if you're going and you're doing this on a regular basis, it's really gonna be worth your while to get something that is quality um, over just something that's cheap that might help, possibly. So those are my basic key things that I bring to the gym. I don't need them every single day. I don't need all of them all the time. I use them for specific things, like I mentioned, and um, yeah, so if you guys have any questions about different brands or different styles or whatever, we might even go over shoes at one point. Robert and I have both actually stopped wearing shoes. Um, unfortunately, when you go to a public gym, you have to wear shoes. They, you, I mean, they don't give you an option. You have to wear shoes. Um, but in our personal gym, we don't wear shoes. We both would rather go flat-footed um, with just socks or barefoot. Um, and then if we, do, if we do go to a public gym, then we have um, the zero drop shoes, um, the lifting shoes, which are also very similar to like what a wrestling or MMA shoe would look like. Um, and yeah, so we can kind of go over that at another time, but these are my key items. Uh, you don't have to go crazy. Again, when I very first started, I used old shoes, old clothes. I had no wraps, I had no nothing. I just went in there and started. And as I began doing things, I started noticing people were using different items like the wraps or um, the belts or the knee sleeves and I would ask them about it. Do not be afraid to ask people about what they're using um, because that's how you learn. What, what are you wearing that for? What's the purpose of that? Um, do you have a preference of brand? Um, things like that. Just don't be afraid to ask people because that is how you are going to be able to learn why they're doing what they're doing or if it's even beneficial for you to have it. Like right now, if you're a beginner lifter, you probably don't need several of these things, but they're things that you might progress toward in the near future. So hope this is really helpful for you guys and I will talk to you all later.